Hello. Hello. We are live. We are live. We wanted to go live today because we have a pretty important update. Yep. Um, we've talked a lot about how the IRS is short-staffed. Yep. We were literally talking yesterday saying they're not really doing a lot of audits. They're so understaffed and under budget, uh, over budget that yep. no they, one gets audited. They can't and really do anything. Yeah, we were talking a bunch of, I guess, smack yesterday, we really exactly were. on this topic of how the IRS makes all these big threats and, and, and promises that they're going to go after people, and then they end up not doing it, uh, sort of leaving us like in the position where we advise people over the years to do the right thing, his say, hey, look, you have some exposure, and then we're sort of wondering, it's like, well, you know, you're kind of making us look a little, not so, those of us who have advised doing the right thing and doing things properly, you're making us look a little foolish. Right. So, I mean, I know we're not the number one concern, how they feel about us, uh, really our clients are, but this is what happened, it's since, uh, we we published that video. We have been getting calls. People streamlined submissions are now under audit, yep. and that is a the first. IRS has been saying for years we're going to audit streamlined submissions, years, and we've seen nothing, not one single solitary call. And all of a sudden, in the past well, a week, few days, yep. the calls have started coming in. Yeah, and we were we were figuring that it would happen at some point that the IRS had a lot of revenue agents that they've trained via the offshore voluntary disclosure program, mm -hmm. those have been moving quicker, been drying up, haven't been as complicated. So we thought that they would be moving those people and putting them into more of an audit role now, now that they're trained and have all these issues and they know what penalties to look out for. Mm -hmm. um, we were just sort of thoughting, thinking it would have happened a lot sooner, but the IRS does always move a lot slower than you would think or you would hope. Um, and now finally, here it is, the audits are happening. And I would say this is sort of the, the thing most people don't understand. And a lot of people have made the soft disclosures too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people made the soft disclosures 2010, 2011. And you're thinking, hey, I, you, you've waited out. For a lot of people, if you, you've waited, uh, you've met the FBAR penalties. It's too late to assess them. And, and so, hey, good luck. Yep. I, mean, that's, I mean, that's awesome. You, you, you won. You won on the FBAR issue. But here's where you didn't win. And this is where they still have you. And I think this is something that did figure into the IRS's calculus about how quickly they needed to get to these cases. From our experience of reviewing streamlined submissions of other firms, other tax professionals, people who want to do is slap something together to get it in there, um, that there is typically missing um, a lot of informational returns. Mm -hmm. These returns, we've talked about them on our channel, how crazy they are, um, and where they come up in uh, very strange places that really don't have a lot to do with tax compliance. Um, I mean, it's loaded. You would never know, as a tax professional, somebody who's trained to do tax returns, you would really never come across this to, to know, oh, this is what it is, I need to file this, this, form. this form. Here, here's a foreign pension. I need to file a Form 3520 and possibly a file Form 3528. Oh, and if I fail to do so, I am now having $10,000 per each one. So one year, you could have two $10,000. So that's just for, for one pension. Mm -hmm. There's other pensions or other things. Well, you have issues. And now this is the thing. Let's just say, let's just stick with that foreign pension. Um, um, if you don't file that form, Form 3520, the statute of limitations on all of your returns, all the ones you've ever filed, hasn't even begun to run. That's insane. So, right, you're calling, you know, you're doing your research to say, okay, how long do I have to wait to the IRS, you know, I get that clean bill of health. Yeah, you're doing your research. You probably, years. So yeah, you probably came to three or six years, and then you saw the, the fraud exemption, but you're not really, because you, that's not really your threat, because you actually reported a lot of your income. So that fraud thing, you're like, that yeah, doesn't quite apply. So you're like, six years, worst case, you're thinking, hey, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, I made it through. No, not quite. And the IRS can look back all the way t all the way in time they don't really even care about assessing you the taxes they don't need to they could just go back to say you know say your foreign pension started in 1997 well now we have 20 years of a form 3520 and a possible 3520a mm -hmm. now not every foreign pension depends on what country you're in what treaty applies and see there it is right there it's so complicated you have to know you have to look at a tax treaty know what's required in order to do that and that's just above the skill set of most people it's just so overly complicated so 20 years times two, you have a $400,000 penalty. And so those are people like, hey, I avoided that uh, potential FBAR penalty of $400,000. Yes, you did. But... We're going to take your entire pension because you didn't fill out a form. Thanks and what's this. worse about these penalties is that they're Title 26 penalties. So the IRS can use their traditional collection methods to get them. 
Meaning, oh. this is, and here's, here's a really big difference. An FBAR penalty, if IRS sets an FBAR penalty, they have to sue you. It's a big pain in, pain to do that. And if you're overseas, there's not a lot they can do mm -hmm. to get your money. If you're overseas and you have a tax debt, a lot of countries have mutual enforcement agreements, and we have one with Canada, mm -hmm. that if you owe a Canadian tax debt, the U.S. will use their collection tools, the IRS's collection tools, to collect your Canadian tax and send it to Canada, and Canada's gonna do the same thing for us. Mm -hmm. Well, these are all in a force all around the world, not every country, of course, right. but some countries have it, so you're now going to have to worry about the IRS actually being able to get these Title 26 penalties for you. Um, so this is always was, you know, this is really the reason why we, we, when we do streamlined disclosures, you know, we're very thorough. Uh, we do the correct job because we're like, we have to, we treat every uh, submission as if it's going to be audited. I think most people try to treat theirs as, no, I'll be the one that isn't. But somebody yeah, will be, and now we were pretty much wrong until yesterday. I mean, I'm sure it started a little earlier than that, but now we're really starting to see it happening, and the IRS ratchet up. And it looks like, so far from what we've seen, that the IRS is choosing 2011 or the yeah. first year that you do yeah. your submission. So these are even They're looking some, yeah. for errors on that. And then I, my assumption would be, if they find errors on one year, then what they're going to do is extend. And they their can right, and they can go. They they can extend this, you know. And it's really not a lot of work. You you know, you might think, well, the IRS that's a lot of work for them to audit twenty years. No, I don't really care about your income. I'm just going to assume your income is right. What I want to audit you is for missing form. That's what I want to audit yeah. you for. Is and that, the form that's really here, what it is. or is the form not here? That's a pretty simple. That doesn't take a lot of time. Doesn't take a lot of resources. Yep. And this is the other thing too. The IRS has been, you know, we've been um, paying attention to their training. They actually put a lot of their training. Uh, online, if you know how to look for it, you can find it, and you, they'll, you'll see what their strategies are. And they're saying, "Look, here's here's penalties. You just pick up, yep. just grab it. It doesn't require any resources." And this is the overall theme of the IRS. They have half the auditors, and they're under pressure to get results. Well, how do you get results? Well, you can assess these crazy penalties in cases where there's no tax non-compliant, where there's no underpayment of tax, yep. and now they get the stat they want. And, you know, they get the stat they want. Hey, look, this is what we've assessed. They're, they, and they're able to clear the cases out. Um, and that's what they're really looking for. They're looking for those simple, simple cases. They, the IRS hasn't audited some rather big players um, in business. And I think a lot of, um, of in-house tax counsel know. Uh, they know that, wow, we haven't been audited in quite some time. Um, and the IRS says, you know, to do, to do an audit on a very large business, it's going to take years. And they're going to fight back, mm -hmm. right? They have that whole, you know, all those attorneys and whatnot to, to fight back. And so you're going to sink, are you really, does the IRS really want to sink 30 people into auditing a billion dollar company for, for what? For a problem that might actually not result in anything good. Or would you rather take those 30 people and say, oh, let's go off the whole bunch of small people. Mm -hmm. And now, oh, each each one of those, because like, hey, look, I got this, you know, here, I got this guy for 40 grand, I got this guy for 200 grand, um, and it was done so quickly, and that's where we, that's really where our fear was coming. Now it looks like it's coming to fruition just a lot, little bit later than we anticipated. Yep. So we do have a service where mm -hmm. if you have done a streamlined submission and you want us to review it, yeah. we can do that. Yeah, streamlined submissions can be can be amended. You, there's, a, there's a procedure for amending it. So if you think you have a weak one, and now you're saying, oh, yeah, they are auditing them, yeah. um, and you want it done a little bit to a higher standard, yeah, yeah we can help you with that. We can help yeah. with uh, reviewing streamlined submissions, mm -hmm. or if the IRS does contact you saying you're going to be audited, uh, don't hesitate to yeah. contact us. Oh, and also, if you did make a soft disclosure, yeah. um, you know, again, this is, this is the, the example I was saying you know, the other day. The IRS identified 10,000 people who made soft disclosures, and really, I, I know of one they audited. Um, and they really haven't ordered the rest. I'm thinking now, if they're on 2011, that's when a lot of people started making the soft disclosures. Okay. So my thinking is we're going to start seeing those. The thing on the, on, on the soft disclosure, you can actually still use the Streamline program. You can actually still use the Streamline program if you did make a soft disclosure. And a lot of these cases, you've already paid the taxes. So now it's just filing these informational returns right so that if you are audited, you have protection. You've already, you know, you more likely you've missed any FBAR. Now let's clean up the rest so that there's no exposure left yep. instead of just sort of crossing your fingers and hoping. Because, again, on these forms, you can't wait them out. They, yep. they have forever. 
this is one time I think where it's important to be proactive. Yeah, I yeah. would say so. All right, well, don't hesitate to contact us if you need help. It's 888-727-8796. You can email info at irsmedic.com, and you can like and comment below and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get more updates about international and domestic tax issues. Thanks for watching. It's a hard part. <laughs>